This talks about the fourth programming assignment. This slide shows the basic concept about this assignment. You need to write a program that takes an input file and count how many times each letter appears in the file. On the slide, the left side shows an example of the input. The right side shows one part of the program's output. The right side shows that in the input file, the uppercase letter M appears twice. The lowercase letter C appears seven times in the input. What are the numbers in front of the letters? These are called the ASCII code. ASCII means the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. The pronunciation of ASCII is ASCII. ASCII is a table that shows the correspondences between numbers in letters. Let's take a closer look of the table. At the beginning of the table, there are some special symbols. These are not printable letters. At the top, there are different ways to express the numbers, using decimal, hexadecimal, and octal. They use 10, 16, and 8 as the bases. We will talk about different number systems later in this lecture. The ASCII table includes space and its number is 32. The exclamation mark has number 33. The left parenthesis is number 40. The plus sign has number 43. The number of the uppercase I is 65. Uppercase B is number 66. The lowercase c is number 99. The lowercase n is number 110. Let's see how we can use the ASCII table in the program. This program uses single quotation marks for a letter. The value of i starts at the lowercase i. As the table in the previous page showed, the value of lowercase i is 97. Thus, value of i starts at 97. The printf statement uses i for two different purposes. If i is treated as a number, it is 97. If i is treated as a character, it is the lowercase i. How does printf distinguish the two purposes of i? The first one uses percent %d. This treats i as an integer. The second uses percent %c. This treats i as a character. The second printf statement prints uppercase i to uppercase f. They correspond to number 65 to 70. Next, let's study how to read one character at a time from a file. Before we read anything from a file, we have to use fopen to open a file. fopen has two arguments. The first is the file's name. The second is the mode. If we want to read a file, put lowercase r inside the double quotation. The result of fopen is saved in a file pointer called fptr. If fopen fails, fptr will be null. Why does fopen fail? Several reasons may cause fopen fail. If the file does not exist, it cannot be read. Thus, fopen fails. It is also possible that the file exists but this programmer has no permission reading the file. In that case, fopen can fail. If fopen fails, the program has to handle the problem. Depending on the purpose of the program, the program may ask the user to provide another file, return exit failure, or do something else. It is important that the program do not f close fptr because doing so the program's behavior is undefined. If fopen succeeds, the program may use fgetc to read one character. Please notice that the return type is integer, not char. I will explain the reason in the next slide. Let's read the documentation of fopen and fgetc. To find the document, Please search Linux and fopen on the internet. fopen opens a file and makes it a stream. We will talk about the concept of a stream in the next slide. If fopen succeeds, 
it returns a file pointer. If f open fails, it returns null. Next, let's read the document of f get c. It takes one argument and it is a stream. This stream is a pointer created by f open. Please notice that f get c returns an integer. The document says that f get c reads one character and returns it as an unsigned character. Then, the character is cast to an integer. This is necessary because when reading reaches the end of the file, a special symbol called EOF is returned. We will talk about EOF in a moment. Let's first understand what a stream means. You can think of a file as a river. The beginning of the file is upstream and the end of the file is downstream. There is marker for the current location inside the file. This marker is at the beginning of the file after opening the file using fopen. The marker moves toward the end of the file if data is read from or written to the file. You can think of the marker moving down the stream. How far does the marker move each time? That depends on the size of the data. If a character is read, the marker moves one byte. If an integer is read, the marker moves four bytes. If a double is read, the marker moves eight bytes. C language has two functions that can report or set the location of the marker. The function ftel returns the current location of the marker from the beginning of the file. The function fc can set the location of the marker to the beginning of the file, to the end of the file, or somewhere between them. We will see examples of ftel and fc later. Let's go back to the question about eof. What is eof? EOF is a symbol defined in the file slash usr slash includes slash stdio.h. The grep command finds the line where EOF is defined. It is minus 1. Please notice that it is not 0. The slide shows a program that opens a file, reads one character at a time using fgetc. The program prints each character and counts how many characters are read. The program uses a rgv1 as the input file's name. Before using a rgv1, we must check whether a rgc is 2. If a rgc is 1, only a rgv0 exists and a rgv1 does not exist. Thus, if a rgc is not 2, the program returns exit failure. The program uses fopen to open the file for reading. If fopen fails, fptr is null and the program returns exit failure. Please notice that we should not call fclose here. The program uses fgetc to read one character at a time. Each character is printed in both the ASCII value and the character. At the right side, we can see the program's output. When the program reaches the end of the file, fgetc returns eof and the program prints the number of characters in the file. Please be careful not to use unsigned char for ch. The reason is that eof is negative 1. If you use unsigned char for ch, ch is always positive and the program will not stop. Earlier, when we show the ASCII table, at the top we can see decimal, hexadecimal, octal. Now, let's explain what they are. They represent different number systems. The most commonly used number system is decimal. The decimal system uses 10 as the base and has 10 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. A commonly used number system is the binary system. This system has only two digits, 0 and 1. The binary system is used widely in computers because electronics can have two states, off and on. Hexadecimal system is often used. This system uses 16 as the base and has 16 digits. 
The 16 digits include 0 to 9. Additional 6 digits are needed and there are E, B, C, D, E, and F. Another number system is the octal system. This uses 8 as the base. This system is not used as often as the decimal, binary, or the hexadecimal systems. Let's understand how the number systems are used. I will use subscripts with parentheses to indicate the bases. The first example is 1, 2, 3, 4 using 10 as the base. What does this mean? We should start from the right end. 4 means 4 times 10 with power of 0. 3, 4 means 3 times 10 with power of 1, plus 4 times 10 with power of 0. The entire number 1, 2, 3, 4 means 1 times 10 with power of 3, plus 2 times 10 with power of 2, plus 3 times 10 with power of 1, plus 4 times 10 with power of 0. Using the same principle, we can understand the meaning of the binary number 1011. It means 1 times 2 with power of 3, plus 0 times 2 with power of 2, plus 1 times 2 with power of 1, plus 1 times 2 with power of 0. The hexadecimal number B9C6 means 11 times 16 with power of 3 plus 9 times 16 with power of 2, plus 12 times 16 with power of 1, plus 6 times 16 with power of 0. We can also express numbers that are smaller than the base. In the first example, a decimal number 5, 1, 2.3, 4 means 5 times 10 with power of 2, plus 1 times 10 with power of 1, plus 2 times 10 with power of 0. Point 0.3 4 means 3 times 10 with power of minus 1, plus 4 times 10 with power of minus 2. Similarly, we can express binary numbers. 110.1 1, 1, 1 means 1 times 2 with power of 2, plus 1 times 2 with power of 1, plus 0 times 2 with power of 0, plus 1 times 2 with power of minus 1, plus 1 times 2 with power of minus 2. The hexadecimal number point C6 means 12 times 16 with power of minus 1, plus 6 times 16 with power of minus 2. The next three examples convert numbers using different bases. The decimal number 534 is the sum of 512 and 22. 22 is the sum of 16 and 6. Thus, decimal number 534 can be converted to hexadecimal number 2, 1, 6. 16 is the fourth power of 2. Thus, it can be expressed as the binary number 10000. The hexadecimal number D is the decimal number 13. To express it as a binary number, it is 1, 1, 0, 1. Let's go back to the ASCII table. The at signs ASCII value is decimal 64. It is also hexadecimal 40 or octal 100. The letter uppercase F has ASCII value of decimal number 71. In hexadecimal, it is 4, 7.